Chicago Bears who come out onto the field at Soldier Field. The NFC champions tonight ready to take on red hot Tony Romo and the Dallas Cowboys in a great matchup on NBC Sunday Night Football. Al Michaels along with John Madden, Andrew Kramer. Welcome to Chicago and so far so good for the Dallas Cowboys coming 2 and 0. Knocked off the New York Giants on opening night at home. Went to hot Miami last week. Big second half rally to defeat the Dolphins. So they come in with a mark of two wins and no losses. Tony Romo has been very very good and so far a seamless transition after four years of Bill Parcells. Wade Phillips off to a very good start in his first year as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys and John I know it's very very early the Super Bowl months away but if Dallas comes in and knocks off the defending champions in their ballpark tonight would you see them number one in the NFC at this point yeah and as you say it's just the third game and I think you would maybe start to think that way but to me Dallas has great offense I really like Tony Romo their running game their offensive line Carol Owens outside Jason Witten at tight end but they're not a championship defense yet they give up too many big plays remember two weeks ago against the Giants the Giants scored 35 against them so until their defense improves, and it could start tonight because they get Terrence Newman back and a part time job but I think until their defense gets better you can't really say that they're the best. Now the Bears do have a championship defense. They're one and one, lose to San Diego, knock off Kansas City. They've given up only 24 points in those two games. But every time we come to Chicago, it's been the case now for almost a full calendar year. In the crosshairs is the quarterback, Rex Grossman. What do you think of Grossman? How much longer do you think he'll be the Chicago starting quarterback? Well, you know, it's the good Rex, bad Rex, and it's kind of been bad Rex this year, and and they're waiting for the good Rex. And I think that. You know the dilemma that the that the Bears are in is if it's not Rex then what are you going to do. I mean you can go to Brian Greasy but that's just a band aid. You know then you have to start all over with your quarterback. The Bears do not want to do that. But I'll tell you this: if Grossman doesn't have a good game tonight or if he has a bad game tonight I think they're going to start in that direction. Yeah, they're going to try to avoid throwing out the quarterback with the bathwater. Well one great matchup tonight we know is that great Bear. Hello Al. Well as John mentioned cornerback Terrence Newman returns tonight after missing the first two games with a right foot injury. He told me he can finally cut both directions something he hadn't been able to do before. He said he's still in some pain but wouldn't take a pain killing injection. Now he took most of the reps this week in practice in the nickel which he'll play tonight but said he's still not in game shape and he couldn't go the full time to cornerback. And he said that don't be surprised Al if he sneaks in for a punt return. Speaking of returns we're going to see the best return man in the NFL right now. I'm not sure we'll see him necessarily with the football because Devin Hester who ran back six kicks for touchdowns last season and won already this season the punt return and the question will be will Nick Folk kick it to him probably not. It was suggested to us last night John he's going to kick it to one of the up men maybe at about the 25 yard line You're right Wade Phillips says there's no way that they're going to kick it to Devin Hester and he was correct and that kick will bounce at the 26 and then go out of bounds but you can credit that to Hester by kicking away from Hester what that means is Chicago gets the ball with great field position at the 40 yard line thanks to that man. You know that always happens anytime you say you're going to kick away from someone sometimes you you have to live with those things that you you kick away sure you did but in doing so they get the ball in the 40 yard line. If you're a guy like Hester I mean that's the equivalent if, if he takes it at the five and runs it back to the 40 yard line it's a 35 yard run back. You have Jock Reeves who will start at the cornerback spot tonight bottom of the screen and he will move with Moussin Mohammed the man in motion Grossman starts by handing the ball off to Cedric Benson fourth pick in the draft three years ago and let's take a look at the Chicago offense Rex Grossman Florida Gators Cedric Benson University of Texas Jason McKee Temple Moussin Mohammed Michigan State University. Bernard Berrien, the one and only Fresno State. Desmond Clark, Wake Forest University. John Tate, Brigham Young University. Ruben Brown, Pitt. Olin Cruz, University of Washington. Roberto Garza, Texas A&M Kingsville. Fred Miller, Baylor University. Cruz, a six-time Pro Bowler, and through the middle. 
goes Benson for a first round of the 42 last year. He played in effect behind Thomas Jones. Jones sent to the Jets had a good day today. Benson is now the man here in Chicago 12 yard game and he does a great job of running here and and sometimes the back has to have some patience you see there he has to wait and wait for something to develop he sees it to the right and then he slides to the right and finds that crease or gap right there. 18 yards two carries the first two plays of the game now Grossman will throw for the first time tonight to the sideline he goes the pass is right on the money but it is dropped it is incomplete Bernard Berrien as he tried to haul it in was hit by Jacques Reeves incomplete it'll be second down. You know, in talking to both Rex Grossman and Ron Turner the offensive coordinator they thought that that's where some of their big plays could come from is is passing on first down. You know, throwing on running downs, get some play action pass. That is better than getting into those third down nickel situations where they can get a lot of blitz because the Bears have not been good against the blitz this year. Now, Adrian Peterson is the backup back to the 40 yard line. One touchdown in 25 drives for Chicago going against this Dallas defense. Marcus Spears, Louisiana State, Jay Ratliff, Auburn. Chris Canty, Wahoo Wah. Anthony Spencer, Purdue. Brady James, LSU. Aiken Adele, Purdue. Marcus Ware, Troy. Jock Reeves, Boilermaker. Roy Williams, Oklahoma. Ken Hamlin, Arkansas. Anthony Hitty, South Florida. Wahawa, AKA University of Virginia, Boilermaker, Purdue. We're talking about Terrence Newman, Allen. This is his first time that he's been in this season. And Grossman gets hit as he throws, and it's a wobbly pass that is incomplete. So Rex got hit. Stephen Bowen, who backs up Chris Canty at one of the defensive end spots, is the guy who comes in, second year guy out of Hostra, and creates a fourth down and eight. You know what they do to Rex Grossman is they spot rush him because he's not a scrambler, and he doesn't move around in the pocket, and he doesn't get outside the pocket. So they know the spot where he's going to be and they just rush to that point and that's exactly what Stephen Bowen did on that play Maynard is back to punt Maynard last week had to miss the game because of a groin pull but he came along in practice this week and he'll send it in the direction of Creighton good rush was put on and that kick will go into the end zone and give the Dallas Cowboys the NFL celebrating it thus it's the Kettos against the Osos. The Vaqueros have it at the 20-yard line for the first time tonight. The Cowboys on first and 10, and Tony Romo will go to the air. Flips out of the pocket, but not that far enough. Mark Anderson, who had a tremendous rookie year, came out of nowhere with a dozen sacks as a rookie, and now a starter sacks Romo. You know, and that's the thing that Tony Romo does so well. He has he has great speed, and, and, he, and he moves. He moves well in the pocket, but this their defense moves great, and they have good speed. And you'll see Mark Anderson there. He can get inside. Tony Romo tries to get outside of him, but he can turn, react, and quickly get back to Tony Romo. So this this is going to be the challenge for Romo is the speed of this Bear defense. Run right by Flozell Adams on second and 21 now on the ground. This is Julius Jones. Hit by Adam Archuleta, formerly with St. Louis and Washington, now coming over to Chicago and creating a third and long. Now the Cowboys with 41 points a game, 45 against the Giants, and then 37 more last week, and 415 yards a game coming into this one. You see, that was a running down there, and the Bears played their eight-man front. They brought Adam Archuleta out. You now you always think that the Bears are cover two teams, but they're not on first and second down. Now when you get to third down they will play that Tampa two in this situation. Owens wide left Tillman one on one with him for the moment third down and 19 Bears moving around Romo throws over the middle Romo to Owens but he's going to be stopped short of the first down. So Terrell found the open spot Tillman was right with him all the way makes the tackle and stops him about two yards shy of the first. Yeah, one of the things the Bears are going to do is they're going to put number 33 Charles Tillman on Terrell Owens the whole time. Tillman is a very physical guy and they want him to play him tight and bang Terrell Owens around a little. That time with third and long there was no reason to play him tight. Well they didn't kick the Hester on the kickoff. Now what do they do with him on a punt return. This is a tough situation here because you're you're backed up and you darn near have to punt it to him here. 
Now you can direction will punt it between the numbers and the sidelines, but you better be careful. Matt McBriar, the Australian kicker, sends it down to the 23 yard line, and Hester this time has no place to go. Good coverage that time by the Cowboy punt coverage unit. 10:37 remaining. First quarterback in over a decade, Eric Kramer had 20 starts, the 20th of which came in 1996. Now Rex at the 24 yard line throws and that's caught and this is Berrien picking up a first down tackled by Reeves. You know John you talked about the good Rex and the bad Rex they talk about that here a lot and also occasionally you'll see his name written in the paper as W R E C K S Grossman. Right and the and the and the problem with with him is he just can't get in a rhythm you know and I think it's it's one of those things what comes first do you play well and then get confidence or do you have confidence and you go out and play well Rex Grossman right now doesn't have an awful lot of confidence they have Hester in the game and they use him as a decoy there as Cedric Benson goes up the middle Hester a great return man he, and they also now are going to try to work him in from time to time offensively at wide out yeah Lovey Smith was telling us the other day that is his sons know you know every time he'd put Devin Hester in it would be a play for Devin, Devin Hester and then the defense would just jump on it. So he said this week he wants to start you know, playing him as a decoy and putting in 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 places where he doesn't always get the ball. Hard to sneak him into the game second down and nine Benson again and Benson up to the 36 yard line. You know with Grossman and we talk about quarterback ratings a lot and, and there's a lot that goes into it obviously but if you rate over a hundred that's that's very good you've had a very good game it's as simple as that if you rate look at the last two parts of that graphic at the bottom a one to forty rating which is terrible four times last year a zero rating which is god awful with eight exclamation points he had one of those games last year. Right, and, and I think we did that one. Wasn't yes, that the did. Green Bay game? <laughs> New Year's Eve. Yeah, we experienced that one. Third and eight. And Grossman throws, and that pass is right there and caught by Berrien. So there is the good Rex with a good arm, threads the needle. Berrien makes the catch along the sideline. First down, got position on Anthony Henry, and that's a 17 yard gain. Anthony Henry gave him a lot of room out there because I know one thing. You look at Anthony Henry back here, you look at that space that he's given up right there for the out, and then you push him deep. They are worried about Bernard Berrien beating him deep. So that's what happened. You know, you tell a guy, don't get beat deep, watch out for Berrien deep, and then, you know, he just forces like he's going up, and then he cuts it off in an out pattern. In Dallas territory now. Play fake, buys time, passes low. And after we saw the good Rex, there's the other Rex with Moose and Mohammed, who's only caught two passes in the first two games. Moose has been a top notch receiver for Carolina and Chicago for a decade now. That pass incomplete. And he said that he wanted to get Moose and Mohammed involved in the game early. One thing I've noticed here is their pass protection is a lot better. Last week against Kansas City, you can say, you know, bad Rex and Rex didn't do this and he didn't do that. He didn't, but he didn't have very good pass protection. Line has to play better, and you've got movement up front here. Fred Miller and Marcus Spears. Ron Winter is the referee. First flag of the night. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 96 moving into the old neutral zone. Calls the offensive false start. A five yard penalty. It remains second down. Marcus Spears comes across, and that means it's second down and five at the 42 yard line. Wade Phillips has been the head coach at Denver and Buffalo and an interim head coach at New Orleans where he succeeded his dad about 20 years ago and in Atlanta where he succeeded Dan Reeves about five years ago. Benson will chug to the 41 yard line to the third down and four and John they had to make a choice. Thomas Jones had done a good job for them wanted to renegotiate his contract. They weren't sure about Benson at least the fans weren't sure figuring a guy who was picked fourth should be better. But now they've handed the ball to Benson and said you are, are the guy. You know that's what I always thought if a guy was drafted that high in the first round why didn't he play more. And I guess early he was having trouble with the passing game not only you know running pass routes and pass patterns but also in pass protection and if you 
can't pass protect it's tough to play a lot third down and four and that pass is caught and that's Berrien making the catch and thinks that he wasn't down by contact but he was at the 33 and that'll be enough for a first down tackle by Anthony Henry Moves the change yeah we saw when Anthony Henry was off we saw Barry and beat him on the out now we see Anthony Henry up here and he's going to beat him on the slant he, he just makes a few moves there gets to his inside Grossman reads it perfectly and hits him in the first window but again good pass protection by the Bears that is big Hester's in the game he's in motion very caught all three of Grossman's completions and out of the outside goes Benson for a nice game thrown out of the 26 and that provokes a flag Jock Reeves got a hand maybe on the face mask and that should tack on some yardage. You know what they're doing with Devin Hester is what the, the Saints do with Reggie Bush. You, know, you get him coming on that end around you can either hand it to him face or mask, fake it to him that holds the backside. Defense number 31. Penalty results in a first down. Garden variety face mask five yards. Now just watch as Devin Hester comes around how it holds this backside back here so that you can get the run to that side. I mean Hester really affects the football game in a lot more ways than you can imagine. Winter called it on 31 and Paul was on 35. Jock Reeves. Hester stays in. Quick count. 21 yard line. Benson to the outside but going nowhere this time. Staying right with him. The emerging star DeMarcus Ware third year out of Troy who really figures to be a big star especially in in Wade Phillips version of the three four and I think he needs another strong rusher on the other side you know Anthony Spencer is a rookie could be that guy but the guy that they're really counting on is Greg Ellis and they're not sure when they're going to get him but you know they can slide everything they can double him they, they can run away from DeMarcus Ware because they really don't have that strong guy on the other side yet. Ellis coming off Achilles surgery. Second down and 11. And that pass is caught over the middle. And this is Greg Olson. He was their number one draft choice. He's playing in his first game as a Bear. He's had a knee injury. The ball got loose for a second, but he covers up, and they have very high hopes. He's a Miami tight end. And when you talk about Miami tight ends, you think about people like Kellen Winslow and Jeremy Shockey. And here's the next guy of that breed. You know, and he's a he's a receiving tight end too. I mean, he's not going to be the blocking prototypical type defensive or, or, or tight end he's going to be the slot wide receiver type of a guy on, on that last play he was in the slot third and four now Grossman to the outside right on the money and Musa Mohammed gets saluted by the crowd he makes his first catch of the night and his third catch of the season he's tackled by Reeves in this drive which is now approaching the six minute mark as a first and goal here. You know they have a, a good deal going here the Bears do because these corners don't know what to do I mean if they come up and play tight then they get inside and run slants and crosses if they play off like Jock Reeves is there then they just throw the ball in front of them. That's what I was saying earlier about this Dallas team that's a good team. But I think that the defense isn't ready to be a championship defense yet. First and goal, double tight end set. They use the fullback McKee. They give it to Benson. He'll cut it back and take it to about the two and a half yard line. Desmond Clark led the way. This drive over six minutes. Good mixture here. They've had six rushes and six passes. Yeah, it's great mixture. I was just thinking of that. You know that. That when Ron Turner was talking the other day, he said, you know, we have to get some passing game going that'll help our running. And usually, you know, offensive coordinators talk the opposite. You know, say we got to get the running game going, and that'll open our passing. But I think he's doing a good job of that, getting some passing going, and that loosens up your running game. John St. Clair, eligible receiver, caught a touchdown pass last week to tackle, but this time they go to Benson for no gain. So it'll be third down and goal as we tick down under four minutes to play. In a scoreless opening first quarter, Lovey Smith, new contract in hand, led the team to the Super Bowl, fourth year as the Bears head coach. And he's from Texas, and he's a big Cowboy fan, or he was a big Cowboy fan growing up. He was a big fan of Roger Staubach, and he said he met Roger this off season, and he was so happy to meet him. You know his, you know his hero, Roger Staubach, and Roger asked Lovey for his autograph. He thought something's wrong with this deal. <laughs> 
Third down and goal. Cowboys are in six defensive backs. Grossman on a roll. Looking. And then he has to throw it out of the end zone. So the coverage was good. The pass was intended for Moose and Muhammad running over a cameraman at the end of the play. Cowboys gave him no opening that time. And so fourth down and goal and a long drive will end with a field goal attempt. And yeah, there was six defensive backs by the Cowboys and there was no one open there. So Rex Grossman was starting on a rollout or sprint out to this side and he made a smart move there. So there's nothing there. Third down. Don't force it. Throw it away and then try the field goal. Field goal from extra point distance. 20 yard attempt for Robbie who was good as goal. Maynard with a hole. And so the Bears had the ball for half the quarter. 7-20. 2-0 Washington losing the Giants coming from behind. So a lot tighter than it was this morning. A bouncing kick and that one will go out of bounds. And Dallas doesn't even have Devin Hester running back kicks. I don't know what that was all about. First down. They're on NBC. Kickoff went out of bounds. Tony Romo takes over at the 40 yard line against this four man Chicago front. And he gives the ball to Jones. That's a gain of eight. Let's take a look at the Dallas starters. Tony Romo, Eastern Illinois. Julius Jones, Notre Dame. Terrell Owens, Tennessee Chattanooga. Patrick Creighton, Northwestern Oklahoma State. Jason Witten, Tennessee. Anthony Fasano, Notre Dame. Logan Lattle, Michigan State. Kyle Kozar, Arizona State. Andre Girard, Colorado. Leonard Davis, Texas. Mike Colombo, Boston College. With a flag here after a quick Dallas huddle. False start. start. Offense number 81. Five yard penalty, it remains second down. Crowd loves that because that's on Owens. And they tried to just run out and you know, you know and spread the bear defense out. The bear defense is in in nickel mm -hmm. and they played that on first down also. Another spread they call this the Cowboys call this empty. Second and eight. Now you have movement again on the left side and that's who do you think of that? It's on. It's hard to miss Flozell Adams. It's, it's always on Flozell Adams. That's number 76. Five yard penalty remains second down. We've been watching him do that and, and some other good things, obviously, no, he for does, 10 years. Yeah, he does mostly good things, but but Flozell Adams has to lead the world in that. And again, the whole thing is being able to get off in the snap camp, get your set before the defensive guy goes. And again, he's playing against Mark Anderson over there, who is a very, very good speed rush. This guy right here. Look at him. He's trying to get the crowd involved so that Flozell will jump again. On second and 13 now. And Jones goes nowhere. 35. Let's take a look at the Chicago defense. Anawale Ogunleya, Tango High School. Tommy Harris. The University of Oklahoma. Darwin Walker, University of Tennessee. Mark Anderson, Alabama Crimson Tide. Hunter Hillenmeyer, Vanderbilt. Brian Erlacher, University of New Mexico. Lance Briggs, University of Arizona. Charles Tillman, the University of Louisiana. Adam Archuleta, Arizona State. Danielle Manning, Abilene Christian. Nathan Vasher, the University of Texas. Third and 15. Dallas has had a lot of success converting on third and long in its first two games. Will they do so here? No, they can't. It's tipped and intercepted. Adam Archuleta intercepts after Patrick Creighton playing with a broken pinky that he incurred last week at Miami. Couldn't hold on. I was, I was watching Patrick Creighton in the, in the pregame warm-up, and he dropped a lot of balls like that. That we took that picture before the game. Has a glove over it, but had that pass deflect off his hands to the Bears for the pick. And now Grossman tries to cash in by beginning this drive with a pass to Berrien, his new favorite target, covered and knocked out of bounds by Reeves after a game of 13. You know, we talked about two weeks ago the Giants scored 35 points against the Cowboys, and and the Bears are doing a lot of the same thing. I mean, those corners are playing off. And if they play off like that, you can throw hooks, you can throw ins, and you can throw outs on them all night. 
Now they're coming up to press, and then you can throw the deeper pattern. From the 35 yard line on the first down. Three yard gain here for Cedric Benson. Here's the Cowboy defense as we take a look at the Cowboy defense and what they've done so far. You know, John, a lot was made of the fact, you know, Bill Parcells ran a, a 3 4, and Wade Phillips runs a 3 4, but there are some variances here. Well, yeah, uh, Bill Parcells was what they called a two gap, where you had your defensive linemen were all big and they all played like tackles, and they had the gaps on either side of them. The inside linebackers had those gaps. Wade Phillips is a one gap guy, more trap penetration, more stunning, and more blitzing. First quarter is over. Chicago three, Dallas nothing. So Al Michaels, John Madden, and Andrea Kramer, three nothing Chicago. Bears trying to cash in off a turnover. It's second down and six here. Grossman throwing, and that one is picked off. So he gives it right back. Anthony Henry. And Henry will run it all the way back out to the 35 yard line on the pass intended for Moose and Muhammad. So Henry, who had two interceptions last week, and the Cowboys had four in Miami. Picks off Grossman and Dallas gets the ball right back. And right, and it's Moose and Muhammad who's running in the end. And what Grossman is doing, he's trying to lead him. You see, here he starts in the end. He's leading him to the inside, but it looked like Muhammad stopped. He didn't. He didn't keep coming across. Had he kept coming across, I think this could have been a completion. You see, Grossman is leading him in. Muhammad doesn't come in, but Henry does come in and pick it off. Agreed. Put it where he should. He was inside of him and he just stopped. So Henry gets the interception. Marion Barber is now in the game. So Jones plays a couple of series. And now, per usual, here is Barber, who scored 16 touchdowns last year. And he runs right into number 92, who is Hunter Hillenmeyer, who doesn't get a lot of acclaim because when you play on a linebacker core that has Brian Erlocker, who everybody knows, and Lance Briggs, who a lot of people know, it's easy to get lost. Right, and then and then you have up front you have Tommy Harris, who everyone knows, who's who can be when he's completely healthy, the the best and most dominant defensive lineman in the NFL. So by the time you get to Hillenmeyer, you have to go through about five or six guys. Look at this, you've got Owens lined up as a tailback just for the moment. He's going to go in motion. Operates now out of the slot. Romo looked that way, then dumps it off for Jones, and Jones is able to slip a tackle in the backfield. A flag goes down, so he turns a loss into what might be a pretty good game as he broke a tackle, broke out of an Erlacher tackle, but a flag was thrown back at the 34 yard line. And that's something that's hard to do against this Bear defense because they have so much speed is to throw screen passes on them, especially before you've established that you can go deep. Block in the back. 82 offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's on Jason Witten. There he is right there. Oh, that's not that bad. No. I mean, he comes up from behind, but he had his head in front. Mm -hmm. Jason Witten got fined for a block last week. He had a crackback block that he was fined, I think, $5,000 for. He was. You know that didn't look. Did that look that bad? To you? No, I mean he—that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, his, his head was in front. I mean he—he he came up and you know blocked him from behind, but he got his head in front. Happened on the other side of the field from where the count go for the official. Second and twenty. Barber is the running back. Marion takes it. Goes nowhere. This is Lance Briggs. You know, Chicago used to seeing good backs. I mean, they've seen probably the two best over the last two weeks. They met LaDainian Tomlinson in week one and held him to one and a half yards of carry. And then followed that up by seeing Larry Johnson to Kansas City 3.4. So over the first two games, the Bears' lowest yards per carry for the opponents since 1942. And against the two best. Right, and they play that eight man up on running downs like they did on that last one, and their front four dominates. Third and 21, Romo steps up, hits Creighton underneath, and Creighton gets up to the 34 yard line, needed 21 and got about 10. Tackle is made by Ricky Manning Jr., so Dallas unable to get anything going offensively tonight. They've had the ball for only six minutes, and Chicago's had it for over 11. Watch Tony Romo. You know, the, the Bears think that they can get some strips. You see how he holds it out here? 
they're going to they're going to try and get in behind them and strip that ball because he does hold it out. He does hold it down and it, as his coordinator says Jason Garrett says he flails it around in the pocket and if he flails it these guys will go after it. All right Hester is back there and the kick is almost blocked and Hester's going to have some room but then he muffs it at the 24 yard line and can't go anywhere. Mark Bradley a wide receiver came in and somehow missed it. He almost blocked it. He might have even deflected it. And then Hester had no chance to run it back after the muff. One pick. He has it now at the 23 yard line and hands the ball off to Benson trying to get outside and nowhere to go. That's Anthony Spencer, number one draft choice out of Purdue, a rookie, and he's getting. He's getting force fed into action immediately as a starter because of the injury to Greg Ellis. You know, and that's what they need on that other side. And we talk about, you know, DeMarcus Ware and the strength on one end, and then so they want to stay away from him. So then that means they have to go to Anthony Spencer's side, and then Spencer has to make the plays like he just did. Second down and 14. Muhammad in motion. Benson. Probes the middle. 24 yard line. You know, I was glad to hear Olin Krut say that. You know, that it wasn't all Grossman. You know, sometimes we tend to give the quarterback too much credit and way too much blame. And I felt against Kansas City uh, last week that this offensive line of the Bears was not very good at all. And they did they did not they did not give Rex Grossman much protection. Now, tonight, so far, it's a totally different story. Good protection for him. Well, Benson's running for only three yards per carry. He's carried the ball a dozen times already. Grossman to throw. A little bit of pressure this time. And that pass is incomplete. Reaching up for it was Rasheed Davis, but he's covered by Terrence Newman coming in and playing in the nickel situation here. And it's fourth down and eight. Yeah, and that's what that Cowboy defense needs is they need Terrence Newman back. And you know, because he's not only their best corner, but he's also their nickel corner. And when he's healthy, he's their punt return. So when Terrence Newman is out, the Cowboys kind of lose three guys. Maynard to punt. Patrick Creighton, broken pinky notwithstanding. Back to run the punt back. Signals for the fair catch. And makes it at the 31 yard line. What a week. Grossman, a number one draft choice out of Florida. And Tony, not only undrafted, but just sat on the bench for three years. Back to pass is Romo. Over the middle. Getting open is the tight end, Witten. Normally, he loves to get Witten in the middle of the field. Witten that time went down the middle of the field, worked his way to the outside. Big gainer there for a first down, 34 yards. Now you watch Witten. He's going to come in motion here across the field. Then he comes up and goes back across the other way. And Talking to Tony Romo last night about Jason Whitney he said he's so big that he said even if I'm looking right or I'm looking left I'll see Jason Whitten in the middle and he said that's that's a real plus for him having that big guy always in the middle for him. Down the 35 Romo will go to the air again this time to the outside and that is caught in the 25 yard line by Terrell Owens. So Owens with a touchdown last week with a couple in the opener. Has now caught two tonight for a total of 28 yards, and that's a first down. Now you feel that Jason Garrett, the offensive coordinator, said, "Okay, that's enough of that run. Let's just come out and start passing on first and second down, and let's go to our best guy. And we can do that. That's Terrell Owens. Again, Charles Tillman out there. Wherever Terrell Owens goes, Charles Tillman goes. To the air, third straight time, and that is Owens this time. The pass is incomplete. And there's a flag at the end of the play as the pass was knocked away by Charles Tillman. Good coverage. You know, Tillman is a guy that is always looking for the pass strip. Interference. Offense number 81. A 10-yard penalty. The big first down. Harold oh, Owens can't believe that it's on him. Second penalty on him tonight. We just circle. He's gonna he's gonna be outside there on Tillman. Uh, I don't know. You got to. You have to let him do that. What was that? <laughs> I don't know. You know, you know, Charles Tillman. I was saying, you know, he's always going after the strip. He's a he's a tough guy, a good cover guy. In fact, Bobby Smith said he's his strip coach on the field. 
And you should always remind the guy, go for the strip, go for this. He is a, he is a tough guy and a big time competitor. First and 20 back at the 35. Earl Locker creeping up and he's going to blitz. That doesn't happen that often. And then Witten gets free again to the outside. And finally taken down by Archuleta after he was trailed by Briggs. Yeah, we talk about, you know, the things that Terrell Owens does. He was on the short cross. Everyone is going to come up. Now watch, Erlacher is going to blitz. Gerard picks him up there, gives a good pocket for Tony Romo. You see the short cross. That was Terrell Owens. They come up on him, and Witten gets in behind him. That was a first and 20, and it got 22 yards. Witten scored two balls for 56 on this drive. Cowboys have started slowly in each of their first two games and then come on and that's the pattern right now from the 12 yard line Romo will throw that one off the hand of Witten at the back of the end zone Dallas did not score a touchdown in either of its first two games yet 45 points against the Giants 37 against Miami in the first quarter of either of those games you know, I think they they came out early and they were trying to establish a run and you're not going to run against this bear defense and then they you know, tried to screen and they've already had five penalties and and so on now they have six penalties but now it looks like Jason Garrett says the heck with that we have a good pass protector offensive line let's just go and throw the ball against these guys not a bad idea Barber is the running back Owens wide to the right and that pass intended for Pisano the other tight end who backs up Jason Witten and plays in these sets coming out of the slot it'll be third down and ten. I was talking to Brian Erlacher the other day and he said he talked to Zach Thomas you know, who played against Tony Romo last week and he said you know watch out he's really quick and he's really fast he's a lot quicker and faster than he looks looks on film he said to always be aware of that with him and I said well what else did he say and he said well he didn't remember a lot because Zach Thomas had a concussion on the first play of the game. No wonder Romo looks so fast. Third down and ten. Romo throws and that pass is incomplete. Creighton wants a flag, doesn't get it. Coverage is good. So a good start to this drive. Backed up by a penalty, converted on a first and 20, but then bogged down here and will have to settle for a game time field goal attempt. You know, I was talking about Charles Tillman and being a physical guy, and you see him on Patrick Creighton here. I mean, he is not going to let him get in there on that slant anyway. The, the rookie kicker is Nick Folk, drafted out of the University of Arizona in the sixth round. Remember last year they had Mike Vanderjet and Grammatica. Folk won the job in training camp. This is a 30 yard attempt. Brad Johnson did the holding, and the kick is good. So with 8.49 to go in the opening half, down the left. Edgar Lopez on the right. These guys do the game every week, normally off a monitor, but here they are because the Dallas Cowboys are in town in Chicago to meet the Bears, the Vaqueros against the Osos. Devin Hester back to receive the kick. Will he bring it back? He's four yards in the end zone. Here he comes. And the Cowboys with good coverage that time, so they do kick it to him. Four yards into the end zone, 18 yard run back. Carpenter makes the tackle there. Grossman and company back to work, 843. What a night. NBC. Chicago from the 18 yard line. This is Benson swinging to the outside and picking up about six yards. Jock Reeves makes the tackle. Penalty. Six penalties to 40 yards against Dallas. No penalties against Chicago to this point. Hold it. Offense number 88. Until now. Penalize half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Desmond Clark. <laughs> Lovey Smith tell, telling us the other day his mom, May, 73 years old, had never been on an airplane until this weekend. And she has flown in for the game. And this is a three yard pickup through the middle. John you can you can relate to that. That's you, haven't been, you haven't been on a plane since 
78 or 79 right right it was it was 1979 it was the the Sunday after Thanksgiving 1979 was the last time I was on an airplane Lovey was telling us a story about his mother never being on an airplane I mean, she had come to his games before and come up here to Chicago from Texas but you know had always driven and this was the, the first time in her life that she ever flew on an airplane I said I can understand your mother second down and 16 and Grossman gets sacked back at the four yard line and we talked about the emerging star in DeMarcus Ware DeMarcus Ware comes around the corner and Chicago now will operate from its own four remember I was talking about a spot rush and you know that right here is going to be the spot and you just rush to that spot and you're going to find Rex Grossman you see because he's not a scrambling guy in fact he just runs into this sack right here. But you know he can't get out of the way so he almost to play Rex Grossman almost has to have perfect pass protection. First sack of the season for him ran around John Tavers Adrian Peterson not to be confused with the rookie Adrian Peterson for the Minnesota Vikings this Adrian has been around for five seasons crowd hates the call. But then again when you're pinned deep in your own territory on third and 20 plus. The risk reward ratio is not really good. Yeah, I mean they're not they're not real good at third and eight, so they right. don't they don't have a lot of plays for for third and twenty, so they just they just run the ball and, and then punt it. But again, that was a a pass protection breakdown, and Rex Grossman not being nimble in the pocket. Brad Maynard this last week's game with a groin pull bounces this one at the forty five yard line. Creighton and feels it. At the 48 returns it to the 45 yard line with six and a half remaining in the half Tony Romo three and a half years on the bench but in his first 12 starts you go back to 1950 Kurt Warner is the only guy in the league since that point where he's thrown for more yardage than Romo this year 18.3 yards per completion. And that's the highest uh, over the first two games of the season since Mark Rippon of the Skins back in 89. So a good start for Romo, who got off to a, a really good start when he took over for Bledsoe last year, earned his way into the Pro Bowl, sort of faded at the end, and then, of course, had the botched cold in the playoff game against Seattle. People thought, well, maybe he'd have a little bit of a hangover. The league would catch on to him. But so far, so good for him, at least this season. From the 46 yard line, Romo on the pressure is able to escape at first, but here comes Erlacher to clean up. That's like a, a, a guy picking up a slop goal after somebody, and it was somebody in the form of Lance Briggs and Mark Anderson create the sack, and Erlacher is there to finish up the meal. You know, and that's what that's what speed on defense does to you because Tony Romo has very quick feet. He's very good in the pocket. He gets that push up the middle. Erlacher was just waiting. He's the second guy. He's green dogging. He's waiting. He's kind of spying Tony Romo. And then when he sees him move in the pocket, he's right up and gets him. But they have so much speed. I mean, not only their end, their defensive tackles, their linebackers, this defense has speed all over. Second and 18. And Romo throws, and that's out of bounds. Funny thing about Erlacher, you think about him as a, a linebacker. Doesn't blitz all that much. In fact, Erlocker won 28 games. That's almost two full seasons without a sack. Then he had one last week, and now he has one tonight. And you know, because he's so good in pass coverage. I mean, he's one of the the best middle linebackers in a lot of areas, but pass coverage being one of them. So when you get third and long like this, you don't want to blitz Brian Erlocker because this is where they use that Tampa two, and he runs deep and ends up in like a safety position. Watch how deep Brian Erlacher will get on this play in his alignment and in the play. He's right here right now. Already lined up eight yards back of the line of scrimmage. A little screen is set up here for Jones. And Jones turning it into a nice game, taking it to the 40-yard line. He won't pick up the first down. Alex Brown makes the tackle, but he goes from third and very long to fourth and about three. Tony Romo's saying, let's go. Let's go for it. I think that he's he's getting a little frustrated now. I mean, he he thought that he got in the rhythm on that last drive, and then he was trying to get that rhythm back, and he couldn't get started. You know, and usually when a quarterback or an offensive coordinator says we didn't get any rhythm, it usually goes with we didn't get enough first downs. Hester back, and Alyssa before the snap. 
So Hester takes a look at what McBriar Time would out. have done. Timeout had been called. Their first. Bounce that one at the 10. Timeout. Time they were ready to punt. Darwin Walker didn't get off the field for Chicago in time. So Chicago had to take a timeout. Now at least Dallas will line up to go for it on fourth and three. I'd be surprised if they go for it. I mean, I think they'll just try to draw Chicago offside. This you know, is very risky. Yeah, before they decided to to punt, you know, Tony Roma looked like he wanted to go for it, and maybe he talked them into letting him go for it. So they line up in the shotgun. They send Owens in motion, and they will go for it on fourth and three. And Romo's throw is caught by Owens. So a big gamble, and it pays off to the 28-yard line. If you don't make it, of course, you give Chicago the ball near midfield. Wade Phillips nods approvingly. Big gamble, and that came about because Darwin Walker couldn't get off the field, and Chicago had to take a timeout. Right, and you see Terrell Owens. He starts off in the backfield. And then that's the big thing that they want to do is move him around. He starts, he ends up in the slot, comes on and in. Tony Romo kind of watching him the whole way. But Tony Romo knew he had that play. You know, when you tell a coach, hey, let me go for fourth down, I'll guarantee you a first down, you better do it. 28 yard line, Romo throws, and that's caught by Witten. And Witten's going to pick up the first down. He's going to drag Hillen Meyer with him for another five yards all the way down to the 12 yard line. And you could just tell that Tony Romo didn't want to come out and he went over there and he did some politic and you know because he was just getting a feeling and he wanted to keep it here they here they have good pass protection if you give Tony Romo that kind of pass protection he could look at his first guy his second guy and eventually like on this play to Whitten his third guy Cowboys have not run the ball once on either of their last two drives from the 11 yard line out of the shotgun here. And this time they'll run it with an inside handoff to Jones, and he gets tackled by Ricky Manning Jr. as he falls forward to the nine yard line, setting up a second down and eight. You know, that's why you, you have to like Tony Romo. I mean, that gunslinger mentality. And we talked to him about, you know, who was your guy, and Brett Favre was kind of his guy. John Elway was the other one that he talks about. And, you know, you can see a lot of Brett Favre in it, you know. And, and that whole thing of you know you know, let me go for it on fourth down. You know, I mean I know I can get it. I got a, a rhythm going. I have something going. I'm going to do it here. You need a coach who's running shotgun with you too. Right. And I think Wade Phillips is that guy. And so is Jason Garrett. On second and eight, that pass is a low but caught. Pizzano makes the catch and stays in bounds at the six yard line. And it will be third down and four. This is where he, you know, he usually looks for Jason Witten down here again, you know, in the middle there, the, you know, the bigger target, and and any any time you need a play, I would also look for Terrell Owens. I think those are probably the two things he's thinking right now is Terrell Owens and Jason Witten. Owens wide to the left. He has Sam Hurd wide right. He has Creighton in the slot to the right. He looks right. He goes right. And it's dropped. A sure touchdown dropped by Patrick Creighton. Creighton coming out of the slot. Had one deflect off his hands. And again, with that bringing it up again and again, it, it comes into play here. Broken pinky last week. Yeah, you see him. He's in the slot. And he just gets over the goal line. The ball is thrown perfectly. It's in his hands. I mean, if anything, maybe he takes his eyes off. No, he doesn't even do that. Is it and and last time when he dropped that ball it was intercepted he was on the bench and saying you know it's not the finger it's not the finger it was me it was me. I don't know what that was it was everything that was him that was him yeah. 23 yard attempt and that is blocked. So an easy field goal attempt and now you've got Adam Archuleta running down the sideline and finally forced out of bounds by McQuiston. Three straight games for the Bears in which they have blocked an opponent's field goal. What a turn of events. Israel Adonije, number 71, who is a great special team player. He's the guy that's going to get it. And, and they do all these things so well. You know, it's it's defense, it's special teams, it's 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 returns, it's it's blocking field goals. It's all these things that the Bears do well, and that's why they were in the Super Bowl last year. Of those three blocked field goals, he has two of them. And now Chicago 
a moment ago they should have been down 10-3 instead it's 3-3 they have it in Dallas territory and Grossman's throw is incomplete down the field intended for the tight end Desmond Clark it'll be second down and 10 and that takes us to the two minute bada boom bada bing performing at halftime second down and 10 at the 46 yard line that pass is caught and Bernard Berrien fights his way for a first down forward progress will spotted at about the 35 under two minutes to play. Varian ran a hook there and just watching in his first half Grossman seems a lot more comfortable throwing hooks and outs. He looked very good throwing those not so good on the ends. Well at six one is he more comfortable looking to the outside. I think so yeah and then you know if he can find that gap of, that he was looking for right there yeah. Oh he's perfectly comfortable there and Bernard Berrien would have had if not a touchdown set up a first down and goal right in his hands a la Creighton on the last series. Yeah and that was a perfect call there Bernard Berrien makes a good move. He goes for the slant Anthony Henry tries to jump the slant then Berrien goes up and again you, know, you have to get your hands out in front of your body you can't let the ball get into your shoulder pad or that will always happen to you. And that was a perfect call the perfect defense the perfect pattern and he dropped soulmates. There he is caught five and dropped two second down and ten. And backing up is Grossman. The pressure was put on that time to Marcus Ware, who already has a sack tonight. A minute 20 now, third down and 10 coming up for Chicago. That's right, when you have a pass rusher like DeMarcus Ware, even though it's a screen pass and you try and invite the rush and then throw it over him, someone has to stay with DeMarcus Ware. Because you watch, he comes here, no one touches him, so he gets a free run at, what, at Rex Grossman. Now, Rex Grossman can't even get a screen pass off. From the shotgun. And Rex will take a timeout. That's Chicago's. And a couple of drops. <laughs> drops. A lot of drops in that move. Short drop here on third and ten, and that pass is incomplete. Varian looks around for a flag. There is none. The coverage there by Anthony Henry. So if they want to attempt a field goal here, they're looking at about a 53 yarder, and that will be the case as Robbie Gold is going to come out. That was interesting there Anthony Henry jumping that slant he had jumped that slant earlier and that's when Barry went by him and dropped the ball but he came right back and jumped it again. Bobby Gold as you can see has never attempted a field goal of this distance. Normally in Chicago you always have some sort of weather. It's perfect right now. It's still it's beautiful. That would be no excuse. And they'll toss it back to him and then Gold will look to throw and he will throw into traffic and that is incomplete. Nathan Jones read that one pretty nicely. And so they're unable to convert off the break that they got after the Creighton yeah. drop and they missed field goal. This didn't have a chance. This call must have come off that moonshot we had. <laughs> <laughs> that play kind of looked like it didn't it. Well the, the one good thing for Chicago here is it saved them seven to eight yards. If you try a field goal and you miss it then Dallas would have started from about the forty two and a half. There's a there it is again. We, we blame everything on that instead because it was an actual play as if it was a pass play a regular pass play conventional. They start back at the thirty five. Right. But I mean you have your kicker and the receiver is your holder and the other receivers your tight end didn't have a chance for moonshot once in a blue moon that pass is incomplete intended for Owens and it will be second down and 10. We can tell you that Sunday night football is being brought to you by Best Buy for a complete home theater experience get easy looking down into refurbished Soldier Field reopened in 2003 Did a beautiful job with it second down and 10. And they're going to keep it on the ground. And this is Barber. And we got a flag here as Briggs hitting first. They might have gotten a face mask. What they tried to do is hit a, hit the draw up the middle. When they get third and long, second and long, or third and long, Hold both in. tackles get outside. Offense number 76. A 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Nope. No face mask. Instead, it's Flozell Adams with his 
second penalty of the night. Dallas yeah. is seven. Now I was just saying what they do is both the defensive tackles line up outside the guards so they really give you the middle and you can run a draw in there. But when you run the draw in there you better block those speedy linebackers so they're the guys that give you the problem on the second level because the first level these guys here are just lining up outside the guards and going after the quarterback with effectiveness do like this but the good news is that the tackles are outside the guards the bad news is the linebackers are inside and they've got a seven man front there as they back off and the pass intended for Owens is incomplete staying right with him shadowing him again is Charles Tillman Owens tonight has scored three passes for 40 yards. Yeah, and again I think that's a that's a good matchup. I mean when you ask a guy to play Terrell Owens the whole game that's that's a tough job because he's big he's he's a, a physical guy he's a he's a tough receiver so you have to match that and I think that's what what Tillman does I mean Tillman is a big guy he's a tough guy he's a physical guy and he can stay with Terrell Owens. Bottom of the screen there's that matchup they're going to give it to Barber. And Barber will chug up to the 32 yard line. So they'll punt. And Chicago will take a timeout, their final one. 46 seconds remain. And it at least gives the punt back if McBriar is going to allow him to. Matt McBriar had a phenomenal year last year. No more Australian rules player. He came over. Went to the Pro Bowl. Hester's going to call for a fair catch, and he makes it to the 29-yard line. The Pulse tonight. Numbers for Grossman. One pick, 78 yards. Romo, one good drive, but an interception spoiled his opportunity for a touchdown. Benson averaging uh, about three yards per carry, and then you had that drop by Berrien, which would have set up a first and goal, and you had Creighton dropping a sure touchdown pass for Dallas. From the 29 now, Grossman throws to Clark, and Clark will try to get out of bounds and does and gets horse collared as well. So he's out of bounds. Wade Phillips removes the headset with a authority and says that was not a horse collar. And there, of course, is the man who created that rule. Roy Williams, the master of the horse First collar. Foul. Illegal horse collar tackle. Defense. 15 yard penalty and a first down. There it is. That's exactly what a horse collar is. You you just get at one time they said you had to get inside the shoulder pads, but now it's inside the jersey and bring the guy down from behind. But the big thing it does it. It puts the Bears in a better position here to take a shot. At the 50 yard line, first down. Grossman throws, knocked away. You know, I guess, John, it's one of those things where you just can't help yourself. I mean, you are the reason. There's a penalty like a horse collar, right? You know it's because of you. You know that it's a penalty. <laughs> and like it's like you can't help yourself. Yeah, but you know it when you're thinking. When you're when you're playing on instincts and it's an instinct your instinct doesn't think I mean your instinct is a reaction and and that's Roy Williams action and instinct that doesn't make it right I mean it's still a penalty but you just see a guy and you run after him and you grab him and that's where he grabbed him. second down and ten Grossman will swing it to the outside and that's a shirt tackle made there as Kevin Burnett Comes in to tackle Adrian Peterson. And Chicago doesn't have a timeout. Right, if you're just going to sling it outside like that, why even worry about huddling up again and spiking it? Right. you got to do something. Well, you spike it here, and that's going to allow you to. Well, you know, you think about this. He... Grossman, if you throw a Hail Mary here, you, got... you better make sure that you don't get sacked like before the play clock expires. Otherwise, you're going to have Dallas with an opportunity to be in Chicago territory. So I mean, if you're going to, you know, that's that's the craziest thing to spike it to set up a fourth down. The defense, of course, isn't going to allow you to get close to the goal line. Right, and you're still the Chicago Bears. I mean, you, right. you, you've scored what one touchdown all season. 
And that was to a tackle. Is Owens playing safety? Yeah, they have four. The Cowboys have four guys deep in the well, goal look line. Look at this. You've got a flag, and you're going to have. Well, the clock ran out, but if they look at this again, and it can be reviewed upstairs, then Chicago may have given up the ball. And Wade Phillips is saying we might have one more play oh, if that's on Chicago. Offense number seven. And it is. They can decline it. Because they the should. penalty occurred on the last play of the game, last play of the half, by the offense. The half is over. Well, that's that. Well, that's interesting. He's down. The question is, where was the clock? Take a look at this. There's the clock at the bottom of the screen. When is the play whistle dead? Here comes where he's going to come in. There's the hold. He gets tripped. He goes down. There should be a couple of seconds on the clock. And Dallas is arguing that point right now with Ron Winter because Romo's out in the field. Phillips wants an explanation here, but there should be time on the clock to let Dallas run one more play. Right, but there's not going to be because Ron Winter walked off the field one way and Wade Phillips and Tony Romo walked off the field the other way. So that is the half which ends with controversy here. First half. A lot of things to talk about, including the last play of the first half. We'll get to that again. Robbie Gold will be kicking off with Tyson Thompson. And Miles Austin back deep. Thompson will run and then he'll have it glance off his knee and go out of bounds at about the 11 yard line. First half ending on this play. It's fourth down. We talked about what Chicago was doing in the first place. We didn't understand. Grossman, and look at the clock at the bottom. Here's one of the keys. Where comes in? The play should be over right there. Three seconds. Watch, watch Ron Winter. The referee's going to come in. This is a fourth down change of possession. He's winding the clock. He wound the clock. They should have at least had a second or two, which would have enabled them to attempt a 54 yard field goal or a Hail Mary or whatever. Not reviewable inside the last two minutes upstairs, but clearly an error in judgment in terms of winding the clock on a change of possession. That was a fourth down play. Here is Creighton for a gain of eight. Andrea talked to Wade Phillips. What did he have to say, Andrea? Well, as you can imagine, Wade Phillips, as angry and animated as I've seen him, he was furious. He said there should have been at least one second left on the clock. As for his team's offense, he said it wasn't so much that they weren't in rhythm, but there were too many penalties. And he said not getting that field goal really hurt. But, guys, huge news for the Bears. Linebacker Lance Briggs is out with a groin injury. Jamar Williams takes his place. Levy Smith said they won't change anything on defense. Mm. Briggs obviously key man for them one of the best linebackers in the league. Romo is going to step up hold on to the ball and then throw against the grain and find Owen. So Terrell gets free and that's a first down improvisation out to the 37 yard line. And yeah, we talked about the Bears and their eight man front and when they bring Adam Archuleta up as a safety he becomes the eighth man on that play he blitzed. And he blitzed on Romo's left side, and that's the side that Romo ran to. If you'll see, the blitz is going to come right in here. You see, Archuleta blitzes that side. Now, now he doesn't have anything to his right, so he runs out to the side that the blitz came from because it was a great blitz pickup by the Cowboys. Chicago very active in their defensive alignment before the snap. And after all, that a three-yard gain for Julius Jones after the 39-yard line. Stats through the first half right there. Eight to one on the penalty ledger. Only 139 yards for Dallas and 105 for Chicago. Right, and that's when you know Wade Phillips was talking about those those eight penalties killed him because it brought some plays back and and gave him some terrible field position. Second down and seven. From the 39 yard line. Romo. Deep over the middle and off the fingertips of Jason Witten, who in the first half collected three passes for 72 yards. Third down. You know, one of the big matchups in here is 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 Tommy Harris coming up the middle, and you watch here he's going against Leonard Davis. And he just kind of pushes him to the outside so that Romo, after the play pass, can come out of it. He will look at it. Tommy Harris, one of the good pass rushers. Leonard Davis, one of the biggest guys in football, 350 pounds. 
is tough to get through. You know he's not going to get through him, and he's pretty tough to get around. Third down and seven from the 39-yard line. Romo stepping up, hit from behind, gets it off, catch made, Owens over the middle. Drew a crowd. Romo got it in there in between Archuleta and Tillman, and that's a gain of 18 to move the chains. You know, this is the thing that, that, that Tony Romo can do so well is move in the pocket. And we see Tommy Harris is going to be right there, and just as he goes to wrap him up, Tony Romo is still looking upfield, still looking upfield, and throws the ball while he's being tackled. That's the advantage of being a great athlete and a great competitor. You have to be able to throw the ball from different angles, including your knees. Romo. That's Owens again, so they keep calling 81's number. Almost a horse tackle there by Jamar Williams, but he got his hand away in time. Still, Terrell has a first down at the 32-yard line. Well, the thing that they know is that the, they can run Terrell Owens on crossing patterns. Here he starts in motion and just goes across the field, and he had Tillman all the way on that one. I mean, because you know you you start with a motion and then the ball snapped and you just continue on across and the the Cowboys have been getting that all night. Meanwhile you've got Adewale Ogunle who is shaken up. He's down on one knee back at the 47. They've already lost Bridge. Chicago is a very physical team. They try to do some smash mouth balls. Right now they are the best in the league on offense and we think we're the best on defense. There's a good lay. We saw him on one knee. They work on him. Alex Brown comes in to spell him. He would play a lot anyway, but now he's really going to be more than part of a rotation, depending on a good status. Romo with that great pocket presence. And again, it's Owens. Owens to the nine yard line for a first and goal. Terrell Owens has now caught seven passes tonight for 110 yards. You know, that was the thing we were talking about earlier is can Tony Romo get away from the inside rush and he's done it a couple times see here comes Tommy Harris again Romo just sidesteps him gets to the outside again continues to look downfield and find Carol Owens right there. And that's the thing where this guy is so good because protection can break down he can get a rush but he can still keep a play alive. Jones is the tailback. Here's Julius. And Julius Jones is out of bounds at the three. His brother Thomas, the former Bear, now with the Jets, had a 100 yard day today. Julius and Marion Barber going back and forth in the Dallas backfield, second and goal. You know, and one of the things when uh, uh, Jason Garrett came in here, he wasn't going to, to just, you know, take Julius Jones out when they got inside the red zone because. Before they would kind of put Marion Barber in this situation, and Jason was saying if Julius Jones is in there, then he's going to stay in there. If Barber's in there in any situation, he'll stay in there. Second down and goal. Off the fake to the end zone. Touchdown to Witten. Archuleta was on him. The play fake helped set up the play, and right over the middle is Witten for the score. Dallas goes down the field. They started this drive back at their own 11. After the kickoff was fumbled out of bounds, they go 89 yards in nine plays. Yeah, here's Jason Witten, and he's going to win that battle against Archuleta because he's so big. I mean, he's six foot five, 260 pounds. And once he gets in this position right there, there's nothing Archuleta can do about it. So that bear defense now minus Briggs for the rest of the night. Agunley went out about halfway through the drive. And Dallas mounts a great looking drive with two rushing plays, seven passing plays. Owens, the big man, Witten makes a payoff at the end. First touchdown of the game. 10 3 Dallas. Three. And now Chicago will get the ball for the first time in this half. It is dropped by Hester. Hester has to collect it. And Hester in trouble. Runs parallel along the goal line and then out of bounds at the 14. So the second time they have kicked the Hester tonight. Flirting with fire but getting away with it. Here's Andrew. 
Well, it's interesting. I watched Rex Grossman on the sidelines for the first couple of series in the first half. What he typically does is comes off, looks at the pictures with quarterback coach Pep Hamilton and the other fellow quarterbacks, then just likes to walk away. He had told me before he likes to keep his thoughts to himself, thinking about what's ahead. He will get on the phone with his offensive coordinator, Ron Turner. But really, guys, he doesn't want a lot of people in his ear. He just wants to keep to himself. And right now he'll keep to himself beginning at the 14 yard line but a flag for a full start begins this drive for Chicago. Full start. Offense number 87. Five yard penalty. It remains first down. Wilson Mohammed John on that last drive Owens four catches for 70 yards on that 91 yard drive. Darrell Owens already has seven catches for the night and they're all the same type of thing those you know crossing patterns and you just kind of got the feeling that the that was the adjustment the Cowboys made offensively at halftime. You know, let's come out, we're going to throw, let's get some protection, and we're going to throw the ball to Terrell Owens on cross. And first and 15, this is Benson taking it up to the 14 yard line. You know, one of the things Andrew was just talking about Rex Grossman and, and not having a lot of people in his ear. One thing you can't do is you can't let players talk to the quarterback. I mean you can't let receivers come up and call and say I want the ball. You can't let runners say you know run me the ball. You can't let offensive linemen say run to my side. Those types of things. You have to have all the players just leave them alone. Second and ten Grossman. Protection is great this time but so is the coverage by the secondary. Mohammed is double teamed by Reeves and Spencer. Third and ten Bluebirds come out. You know, one of the things they, the Bears probably talked about is getting Moose and Muhammad, number 87, involved here, and so they're trying to do that. Now Grossman comes on a roll, so so he starts, you know, running a hook and coming in, and then he just keeps going to the out on that side, and that was burying on the other side here. Third down and ten at the 14. Carpenter showing blitz and backs off and. Into coverage. Grossman nearly got sacked from behind. He's going to die for the first down and get it. Across the 25 to the 26 yard line. He does it himself. Yeah, and Rex Grossman has to do that. Every quarterback has to be able to make a play with his legs. But we just saw that last drive. We saw Tony Romo do it. And then we see right here, Rex Grossman has to do it. They, if they give you that gap, if they give you that hole, you have to take it, but you also have to get a first down. Look at Rex Grossman here. He knows where he has to get for that first down, and he gets there. Second longest run of his career from the 26 yard line. He throws. He has the open man. Clark, the tight end. Williams tried to bump him down and couldn't. And that crossed Dallas about another 25 yards. Hamlin finally catches up with him. All the way to the 21 yard line. As you say, Roy Williams had pretty good position on. We can see right there, it's the outside receiver, and he runs a little out and then back into the middle. A little out and up as a tight end from the slot, Desmond Clark, and then he's a big, strong guy. Roy Williams knows that you have to wrap up on a tackle. He doesn't wrap up on Desmond Clark, and Clark gets another 20 yards. 52 on the play. From the 22, Grossman staying in the pocket, over the middle. He winds up hitting Greg Olson, the number one draft choice for a first down at the one. So he goes to one tight end, the veteran, then he goes to the other making his NFL debut, first and goal. And they couldn't wait to get Greg Olson back. Here he is right here. He's the tight end. They really worked with him on this pattern a lot on Friday. They, went, they said once they get in the red zone, Greg Olson is going to be a big threat. And you can see right here, Rex Grossman can see him. He darn near looks at him all the way. That was where he was going. First and goal. And Benson will take it in. The big play, well, a couple of them, but go back to Rex Grossman on a third and ten, running for the first down. Then the pass to Clark. Then to Olsen. Now the touchdown. You're right. The the big play was was Rex Grossman running. You see right there, Reuben Brown, the big left guard, number 74, 
he pulls and he's going to lead Benson as he starts to lead him right there. There's no one to block. He just puts his head down, runs into the end zone. Benson puts his head down and runs right in behind him. Gold for the extra point. Well, everybody was booing on second down. Then they started cheering on third down with that run. And now they're ecstatic. 10-10. Giants came from behind. Football Night in America starts things at 7 Eastern time. 10-10 here. Kickoff taken by Tyson Thompson at the four-yard line. And the with a flag down, the native of Irving, Texas, brings it back up to the 25-yard line. You know, that Eagle offense was really something today, wasn't it? Well, three returns. Holding. And the 19 of the return team. Penn lies half the distance to the goal. First down. They're great players and coaches may be bad sometimes, but they don't stay bad. Not too long. Especially after last week. Almost never scrambles as Romo on first down throws. And that is caught by Whitten. Over the last two seasons, Grossman has 27 carries. 22 have been kneel downs or fumbles. Three were sneaks. So that was only over the last two seasons the third wheel run for Rex Grossman. And a water run. That may have turned a few things around. Right. And, and it was exactly what he needed and exactly what the team needed at the right time. And quarterbacks have to be able to do that. If they're going to rush you wildly and give you those gaps, you have to take them two or three times a game. Second and four. And that pass is a little low and incomplete intended for Creighton. Coverage was very good. Nathan Vasher, 31, was there. Third down and four. I think you see that Brian Erlacher is coming on a blitz. You'll see number 54 right here blitzing. And I think that Tony Romo knows that. So he starts to move a little. See him fake to the left, move out to his right. But again, always looking upfield. That time. I think he threw it away from the defense rather than throwing it to Creighton. Third and four again. Owens has been lining up in the backfield and then going in motion, as is the case here. Romo. Flag. For the moment, it's a first down. Barber to the 25 yard line. Doesn't sometimes Tony Romo just look like he's playing out in the park? You he know, does. He just kind of takes the ball and he runs out there a little and he and points to Barber, you know, keep going, go some more and, and throws it to him. He has Holding. those instincts. Offense number 70. Penalize half the distance to the goal. Repeat third down. Leonard Davis is an injury. That's Vasher who was in on the tackle. The Chicago cornerback. So another Chicago defensive injury. And we know Ricky Manning Jr., who normally plays in the nickel and dime, will come in for Vasher. He's been a big play guy. We've got Jamar Williams playing in Briggs' spot. Agunle is back in the game. And it's third down and 11 now for the Dallas Cowboys from the eight yard line. And Tony Romo is a quarterback that's not afraid of a third, third and 11. The Cowboys can be successful in this situation. Romo over the middle. Owens! What a night for this guy. And look at this. He's not done yet. After the 47 yard line, Sam Hurd threw a real nice block to help spring him for even more yardage. So out of a hole they come from third and 11 to first down near midfield, 35 yards. Here we're talking about that wide rush that the Cowboy that the Bears used. And you can see, look at the middle that they give Tony Roma there. Not, not only can he step up to throw in there, but he has great vision in the middle. And then you bring Terrell Owens across, and you're going to see everything that he does. You see that block there by Sam Hurd? Oh, yeah, on Archuleta. Yeah, wide receivers have to do that. That's, that's part of their program and part of what they get paid for. Up at the 43. 5.20 to go in the third. Romo swings it wide open. That's Bird, and that's Archuleta again. So the two guys who faced each other on the last play with Bird getting the best of Archuleta, and he does it again to him 
on a play that covers 25 yards. Don't you like to see that kind of a reward? Is a guy makes a block and then the next play you throw him a deep one? He started on the left side, came in motion across the field, caught him in his zone, and then caught that ball in between the short guy and the deep guy. Beat the corner. Marshall let it came over. The stop at the 32 yard line. Romo. That presence again. Well, he's so good at turning those shoulders, and the pass is incomplete. John's talking about the instincts in the playground. He's so good at just moving those shoulders left and right and buying that extra time. Right, and that's the type of thing that you really can't teach. I mean, there's so many things that Tony Romo does that are just instinct. I mean, he feels that rush, but even when he feels the rush, he gets away from it, and his eyes go upfield again. I mean, he never puts his eyes down. He never looks at the rush. He doesn't worry about it. He's always looking upfield to get the ball down there. Second and ten from the 32-yard line. And a quick pass to Craig. This time he holds on. He's in trouble tonight handling the football. And he is close to a first down. You know, don't you feel that the, the Cowboys now are a little like the Patriots were last Sunday night? That you know that the running is tough and you know in that middle is, is tough to run in and they're so fast and good tacklers just bare defense that why waste time running? You know, why not just throw the ball every down and when you have a guy that has as much confidence as Romo has, that's that's really not a bad plan. And he's doing it without a guy who would be his number two receiver. That's Terry Glenn, who had his knee scoped a couple of weeks ago. And they hope to have him back at an undetermined time, maybe midseason. Country and, and I've been here for a week and I've just been enjoying this city and Michigan Avenue and and everything there is here. I mean, this is about you know the Bears and the Cubs and sports, and it's just it's just a great place to spend a week. From the 22-yard line to the outside, Barber. Of course, everybody's talking about the Cubs. Baseball season with a week to go. Cubs appear to be on their way to postseason play. Lou Pinella comes in, as he's done so many times in his career, helps to resurrect the team. Who knows? Right, I'm sitting in the lobby the other night, just sitting there, not bothering anyone. Guess who walks up? I swear, Ernie Banks. Oh yes, yeah, exactly. yeah, Mr. Cub. Let's play too. Yep. No, no, that's great. I mean, you know, that's that's one of the great things about this job and traveling and sports is you get to meet class and great people like an Ernie Banks on your way to this. And he means it too. He could go to a doubleheader every day. Second down and six. Barber. And Barber takes it close to a first down. Marion Barber's father is an NFL running back, primarily with the Jets years ago. Marion's really come along, junior, fourth round pick in 05 out of Minnesota. 16 touchdowns, including 14 rushing touchdowns last season. Right, and he averages uh, 6.2 yards per carry. So everyone says, you know, why doesn't he play all the time instead of Julius Jones? Well. Julius Jones, you know, plays some of those tough downs of, you know, the first two series, which are always the toughest in the game. And Marion Barber's a good back. He's a tough guy. He's a good blocker. I like what he does, but I kind of like the combo of both of them. You know, it doesn't have to be either or. Third and a short one. Barber and Barber despite running a lot on third down last year he was only 10 for 20 not a good percentage on third or fourth and one but he gets it here so Marion Barber moves the change we tick down under two minutes to go in the quarter and the ball will be spotted on the 10 yard line. Well, Jason Witten is right here, and he's going to get a good lead block there. And again, Barber has a little patience. You know that if you just take that ball and just put your head down and ram it in there, that's not the way to get first downs. You have to have vision. You have to be able to make little cuts, find creases. It's first and goal. The nose of the ball right on the 10. The Cowboys have 14 first downs tonight. That's their first rushing. 
swing pass. Barber cuts it back inside. Inside the five breaking tackles. Goes in for the touchdown. Broke out of an Adam Archuleta tackle. So Adam had a series to forget. Getting blocked. Getting overlaid on a long pass down the right sideline. And having a tackle broken here for a tie-breaking touchdown, 16-10. Right, great running by Marion Barber after he caught that ball because those are the types of things that the Bears do well. You know, fly to the ball, tackle well, those kinds of things. That time, Marion Barber did it better than the Bear defense did. Nick Folk for the extra point. Cowboys two possessions in this half, two touchdowns. Chicago one possession and one touchdown after a 3-3 tie at the half. See Marion Barber is going to get the ball out here on the right side. He was looking for Jason Witten I think so instead of throwing it to Witten he throws it to Barber and Jason Witten becomes a blocker and then Barber just said hey enough of this makes one miss there makes another miss there and then runs it into the end zone. Manning had the first shot Archuleta had the second shot. Let's see Witten is going to make this first block here and that's the one that that frees Barber to the outside and then he, they left two for him out there and Marion Barber took two bears. I'll tell you this this Tony Romo is something I mean the way that you know, you know he moves and and you know we, we said you know Rex Grossman maybe doesn't have a lot of confidence and this guy here is just full of confidence. Yeah Romo grew up in southern Wisconsin about an hour and a half drive from here went to school as we said at Eastern Illinois which is kind of like the modern cradle of coaches right now and as much as Mike Shanahan went there Brad Childress went there and Sean Payton went there and Payton was telling guys through the years hey you should see this kid at Eastern Illinois and then Sean of course wound up on the coaching staff at Dallas now at New Orleans and here's Tony as the Cowboy quarterback Hester will take it at the seven yard line yet to get on track tonight and he takes it back to the 35 yard line Andrea what's up we just saw Tony Romo on the sidelines and back in the first quarter after his interception when things go badly he said he just needs a moment to keep to himself to calm down then he initiates going to his teammates like here with the offensive line. He sort of likes not to have too much information thrown at him but typically when he's talking to Terrell Owens they're talking about how defenses are playing him 90 percent of the time he says it's about release patterns but really he stays level headed during much of the game. Tony leading the team on two touchdown marches here in the third quarter. Now Grossman will start this drive by going to the outside. Works the sidelines again. This time to Cedric Benson out of the backfield for a gain of eight yards. You know, one thing I think the Bears have to do is is continue to run. You know, and not just get into one of these things, pass, pass, pass all the time. Because remember talking to Levy Smith the other day. He said, you know, he said we're a running team. And I think if you are a running team, you better start to show it now. Second down and two. And again, Benson should have enough for a first down. Gets across the 45 yard line. Dallas thinks that the ball came loose. And that's going to be the case, barring a challenge. So. A play that was so innocuous, which appeared to result in a two yard gain in the first down, winds up with Roy Williams getting the football. And obviously, the coaches upstairs will take a close look at this and determine whether or not they want this play to be challenged. Lovey Smith, right now, waiting for the replay. For the moment, it's thing. we're going to take a look at the replay here which I know the Bears coaches can't wait to see either Dallas wants to run a play right here Chicago taking its time getting its defensive unit on the field. Well you can't see anything there I mean you can't see the ball or the player I see the ball I see the ball on the ground you see Roy Williams get it. And again did the ball come out before his knee went down. The ball appears to come out. Chicago 
you, know, you see the Chicago ball. Chicago challenged the ruling on the field. You've been, review. That means you can't overturn it. The ruling on the field it. stands. The ball is fumbled. First down, Dallas. Chicago is charged for their first time out. One of those, he didn't. Very tight call. Benson had fumbled on only two of 267 carries coming into the game. So that's unusual in and of itself. And this is Jones making the catch. He's going to pick up the first down. And then he's going to get horse collared without a flag. Because that's Jamar Williams who comes in. But that was legal. Didn't get inside the shoulder pad. You know, these tight ends of the Cowboys do a good job blocking downfield. We saw Jason Witten. This time you're going to see Anthony Fasano. He makes a block there to let Julius Jones get to the outside. Is that a horse collar? Well, he got the shirt. I mean, I think you could have called it. It has to be inside the shirt. It's supposed to be. End of the quarter approaching before the snap. By a touchdown at the 31 yard line, we start the period with a first and 10 for Tony Romo. Big night for Owens. Eight catches, 145 yards. And he's still got some more in him. Mm -hmm. Pump fake. Going deep, too deep. Tended for Witten. Covered by Hill and Myers. You know, the one thing that Jason Garrett has done so well with Terrell Owens is moving him around. And most of the balls that he's going to catch are going to be right in there in the middle, kind of between the hashes. So he lines up outside and then comes in the middle and catch him there. So then you can do that. Then you line him up in the backfield and you let him kind of go in motion, but he still ends up in the same place between the hashes. He has been killing this bear defense in that area from a lot of different places. This time he's wide left and you got movement up front. You know, that's always Tommy Harris. I mean, Tommy Harris gets off on the ball faster than any defensive lineman. And a lot of the time. Defense number 91. Yep, that was <laughs> they Five caught him that time. Main second. The, the Chargers were going in for a score. Yep. Second down and five. And that's a big hole for Jones inside the 10. First and goal at the three, but a flag down at the 19 yard line, and the indication is against Dallas. You know, and that was offense number 76, a 10 yard penalty, a few second down. Lozell Adams. And there's penalties, and I know that's what Wade Phillips is thinking that, you know, we're a good offense, but doggone it, we have way too many penalties. You're going to see him right here. He's going to go on. Oh, he didn't have to hold him there. It was on Hunter Hillenmeyer that he was holding, but he had position on him, and he didn't. He didn't have to do that. Three penalties on Adams, 11 for 90 yards on Dallas. Yeah, that kills him. But I'll tell you one thing: this this Cowboy offense is worn down to bare defense. Don't they look tired? I mean, they look like. You know where they were so quick and you know and flying to the ball now they're a half a step slower on everything. Hey, they wore down the Giants in opening night. They wore down Miami in the second half last week. You saw Jones come off the field with some assistance. Barber is the back. Heard goes in motion. The fake to Marion Barber. Romo stepping up again. That presence and turns a would-be sack into a first down as he hits Jason Witten to the 20-yard line. You know, and I believe him when he says that. You know, he said that he couldn't look right or left, but in looking right or left, he always sees the middle. You see, he's looking right out there, but, but, but then he makes a turn and comes right back to the middle because, you know, it's not just looking and just seeing one thing. His peripheral vision is so good that as he's looking to the outside, he can still see the middle. And that's where he's finding Jason Witten, and that's where he's been finding Terrell Owens all night. And his instincts. That a lot of it has to be just God given to be able to feel it the way he does. This time it doesn't matter because it is Brian Erlacher who comes in and says, I've seen enough of that God given stuff. You're going down. Yeah, that's that's exactly what he said. Maybe he didn't say given. <laughs> but he came, he right. came flying in there, and you're right. Erlacher <laughs> says that we've had enough of that stuff. And again, you know, someone has to block him. I mean, they, you know, that. 
that the guy is you know we're talking about Tony Romo he is Superman but if you don't give him a little more help than Marion Barber gave him on that one then Erlacher is going to get him to the ground Erlacher with two sacks tonight three in the last two weeks after going 28 games without a sack it just took Carol Owens out second and 20 here's Barber holding balls his way to the 25 yard line Jamar Williams filling in for the injured Lance Briggs on the stop. Yeah, we've talked about this bear defense getting a little tired and worn down. I think Carol Owens has caught so many passes. He's caught eight passes already. I think he's kind of worn himself down. So he just went out for one play. He's coming back in right now. Bob Babbage took over as the defensive coordinator. Ron Rivera was here last year. Rivera then goes to San Diego. I'd say the two guys I would take take away right here would be Terrell Owens and Whitten. Owens wide to the right. Whitten comes off the line on the left side. The pass is for Owens and it is incomplete. Charles Tillman was there, read it perfectly, was able to step in front and force the incompletion and Dallas will settle for a field goal attempt. Well, they finally took that thing away. They're going to get a blitz here from this side. And you see Romo feels it so he starts to go to the right but where does he look he looks for Carol Owens in that same spot where he's been throwing it to him all night right between the hashes. Do it a little behind him though didn't he. This will be a 44 yard field goal attempt. Nick Falk has had one block tonight. Brad Johnson the veteran quarterback to hold he puts it down and the kick is good. You go into Chicago, you beat these guys on the road. Who's better than you after three weeks in that conference? Here's Need Hester right now. Here he is. And they strip him of the ball, but he gets it back. But what coverage tonight by the Cowboys? They started out by not kicking to him. And then it is Keith Davis who stripped it. Ian Badejo is the guy who actually got it back to keep possession for Chicago, but a swarming special teams ever tonight by the Dallas Cowboys. You know sometimes that's a great motivator. You know you say we're going to kick away from this guy and and then players say no no let's kick to him. We're not afraid of him. Come on kick him. We'll show you. So then when you when you do kick it then you better get down there and make a play like Keith Davis just made. This is what the Bears usually do so well. I mean the Bears yeah. tackle and strip and do those kinds of things. Adrian Peterson is in the backfield. Grossman will go deep down the sideline. And it's picked off. And that's Henry with his second and fourth in two weeks. Inside the 10 and a touchdown. As Keith Jackson would say, whoa, Nelly. All right, that's exactly what the Cowboys needed and exactly what the Bears didn't need. And what they needed was a good drive keep their defense off the field let them get rested and instead they get this. I mean that's that's that that, that play didn't have a chance. I mean he had a rush and you talk about throwing into a crowd. Look at this. See DeMarcus Ware got there and kind of deflected the ball as, as he was dropping back but that was that was still thrown into a crowd of white jerseys. Whistle before the attempt. Year. And don't forget two years ago when Grossman got hurt Kyle Orton came in and led the team into the playoffs even though that was all about defense that year like it's not now but you know what I'm talking the seven to ten after the Henry run back Hester and again just a phenomenal job with a flag thrown here Patrick Watkins the big six foot five safety now a special teams guy for the most part for Dallas make sure that Hester doesn't get on track two flags on the play. Yeah they have the Bears on the heels now and they're just they're just keep pushing them back and back and back. I mean they are completely controlling this game. It was one of those things I said earlier you know that this was going to be a big test for Tony Romo and yeah, because he was going to see a pass rush like he's lived brilliantly. The Illegal block in the back during the return number 16 of the return team. That penalty will be assessed from the eight yard line half the distance to the goal. After the play was over delay a game illegal spike return team that penalty is declined. First down. McNabb, when you look at that 
rating, which is a perfect rating at 158.3. Grossman hit as he throws, and the pass is collected by Varian. But the league starts with McNabb embroiled in the controversy surrounding his remarks to, to James Brown. Everybody's saying, well, his knee is not 100%. People saying, well, maybe it's time for McNabb to leave Philadelphia. They're facilitating his exit. Then there's some speculation in Chicago. McNabb's a Chicago kid. Maybe we can get him here. Well, McNabb is not going anywhere right now except the Meadowlands next week. Right, and, you know, a player can, can have a bad game. An offense can have a bad game. But, like I said, great players and coaches and systems don't stay bad early. Brian Greasy on the sideline. As Grossman. Shot puts one over the middle. That's caught by Adrian Peterson. Let's go to Andrea. Well, with all the speculation about what's happening to Rex next week, what about next year? He is in the last year of his contract. He told pieces to be a real good team to have to start all over again. And that's something, John, I think a lot of people overlook as they pick up the first down here on the Peterson run. It's not as if you're saying, okay, it's time for the veteran to go. We got this young up-and-coming guy, and let's see what happens with him. This is Greasy going into his 10th season. I mean, Brian is tried and true, but here's a guy. I mean, Brian with Denver and Miami and Tampa Bay and and now Chicago and there's Kyle Orton the other quarterback who's who's number three that's not the long term answer no and then you have to have a long term answer so then you have to start all over again to get a quarterback and then someone said why didn't five years ago you take Tony Romo who was just down the road and then go into that side of the street I would say if I'm Jerry Jones I think Tony Romo has shown me enough that I would start to tie him up. Calf roping. They'll, they'll tie him up pretty soon. I don't know. You know, I mean, it's one of those things that they can let him go and then franchise him. Yeah, I wouldn't mess true. with him that way. I wouldn't yeah, do that. That's true. Mohammed picks up the first down on that reception. And that pass to the outside is incomplete, intended for Mohammed. Speaking of that Romo contract. Andrea I'm just brimming with contract information guys I talked to Jerry Jones before the game he said they are continuing to talk but he said the more games that Romo plays the more he knows and the better decisions he can make and remember there is no pressure to get the contract done I know you don't like to hear it John but Romo can be franchised for the next two seasons so as far as they're concerned they really have him wrapped up for for that period of time yeah but that's not enough and Jerry Jones is a smart guy and knows that I agree with you, John. It's not, not something you want to do with a guy who you want to be the, the face of the franchise for a while. Here's Adrian Peterson. Meanwhile, the Bears have also seen Reuben Brown get shaken up on this series, the starting left guard, and he was taken back to the locker room. So they're paying a price in terms of injuries tonight as well as on the scoreboard. Yeah, the Cowboys have come in here and whipped them pretty good tonight. Third and ten. It was 3-3 at the half. Grossman. Ooh, here comes the crowd again. Anthony Spencer with a sack. But you've got a flag back at the 36-yard line. And you've got a face mask call coming up here. I don't mean to beat up Grossman, but that's the difference. I mean, if you get a free rusher on Grossman on the spot, gets him. A free rusher on Romo, you're still playing football. Wade Phillips declining the call. That's to be the face mask. Number 57 offense. Penalties declined. Brings up fourth down. That's Crutes, the center. This is a thing that really hurt the Bears in the Kansas City game is just stunts where the you see right here, here's Spencer here. He starts on the outside, comes on a twist, coming right up the middle. The Chiefs killed him with that last week. Maynard to punt. Creighton stands back at the Cowboy 25 yard line. There's a flag. Creighton fields at the 33. And out of bounds he goes. Already had 16 penalties in the game. 11 have been called. Holding number 42 of the receiving team. Penalized at the end of the kick, 10 yards, first down. In fact, right when you can say that the day before the game and then come in here and do what he's done tonight, that's 
That's true. Confidence bordering on arrogance. Use a little clock here, Barber. Well, for Mr. Wade Phillips, big change, of course, in San Diego. He left there along with Cam Cameron, who went to Miami and is now the head coach. And of course, Marty Schottenheimer got fired. But you know, the thing about Wade Phillips, and I don't want to contrast him with Parcells. I mean, obviously, they're different guys and everything. And you know, there's a love affair going on right now with Wade. He is. He's got that wonderful. Texas homespun humor. I'm reading this Q&A with him last week in one of the Cowboy publications, and it's one of those things about what's your favorite food, what's your favorite TV show, your favorite book. And then the question is, what would you be doing if you're not coaching? And his answer was, I wouldn't be answering this questionnaire. <laughs> Perfect. Second and seven. Barber. Up to the 32. Well, his father, Bum Phillips, brought Wade into the game and so the next end of the game is West Phillips the offensive assistant quality control he's on the Cowboys staff and right now Harris is down on the field Tommy Harris their defense when you have Tommy Harris the defensive lineman and Briggs a linebacker and Vasher a defensive back the defense has been hit injury wise on all three levels third and one and that's not to even mention as it's close to a first half of Barber they lost Mike Brown they're starting safety on opening day and Dusty Dvorak who was a starting defensive last year for four games and they lost Sean Alexander for six so they were able to get through that but they're one of the very few teams that was able to pull it off in recent years. You know, we're talking about Wade Phillips, and and remember last week we had the San Diego Chargers, and I was saying that it takes a while to you know adjust to a new coaching staff. The Chargers had eight new coaches, but here's a guy the same situation. I mean, he comes in here, and and he coaches quick. You know, I mean, everyone got what he was doing defensively. Jason Garrett put in a new offense. They got it offensively, and they got it right off the bat to get off to a start like this. So. You know, I mean, they have good players, and they've done a good job in that area, but they've had super coaches. Second and nine, Barber. And Barber gets taken down by Tillman. And, and John, a word about Bill Parcells as well, because we were talking about Bill, and he spent four years there and helped, you know, get the franchise turned around after three, five, and 11 seasons. And Tony Romo, in a way, Tony, Tony felt, he felt terrible at the end of last season the botch snap in Seattle not just because in effect it was the key play of the game and cost him the game but he thought that that might have facilitated you know Parcells departure because remember at that point Bill was kind of on the fence about whether he'd come back or not and Tony at one point thought oh you know man I just I just sent Bill Parcells into retirement but it's interesting how Parcells stayed around in Dallas after he had announced he was gone and had a nice little talk with Romo and just to paint the picture as Barber breaks one into the secondary inside the 30 the 20 inside the 10 and all the way to the one yard line. I tell you it's paying off right now. I mean this Dallas offensive line has done an outstanding job all night and they wore this bear defense down. And, and it finally pays off now. I mean, here they get, and they just get a body on a body on a body on a body, and Marion Barber is able to run right through them. But this is the effect of three quarters. I mean, this is what happens. You know, like in a fight, someone gets knocked out in the 10th or 11th or 12th, and it's effect of what you did in seven, eight, and nine. This is the effect of this big offensive line getting on this defense for three quarters. And stuff like this happens in the fourth. And that's Barber who gets stuffed here, but that was Erlocker, 54, who couldn't make the tackle on that run, which turned out to be 54 yards. And just to put the finish on the Parcells story, Parcells, after he steps away, is still in Dallas. He's in the hot tub one day at the facility. Romo comes in. They're in the hot tub. And Parcells says to Romo, we're talking about Tony's future, he says to Tony, don't let good enough be good enough and those words ring in Tony's ears and this season so far good enough has been better than better than good enough right, right, but, great. but he's not going to let this good enough be good enough either right second and goal Barber to the end zone 
you know, talking to Jason Garrett last night, he said, he said the best part of our offense is our offensive line. And you think with the quarterback, Terrell Owens, you think that that really can't be true. But the way they played today, it is. I mean, they played the best defense in football in the Chicago Bears. And they, and they kind of wore them down, and they kind of beat them up. And this is a result of it. But this big offensive line has not only done a great job on the run block, as we see here at the end of the game, but pass protection all night. Which is the best team in the NFC? It would have to be this one. 29 yard line. Manning. It, it always <laughs> goes back. Whenever you talk about Chicago Bears and offense and quarterback, eventually you will get back to Sid Luck. And there's another interception by Williams. Roy Williams with a pick. And you, the booing would be a lot louder, but about half the crowd's already in the parking lot. Rex Grossman is probably he's probably getting to the point that he's booing himself. Oof. I mean, here he gets in the shotgun, and and you look, and he's looking out there to that left side the whole way. Roy Williams, I think, was just in his zone, just reading him and watching him all the way. You see, he starts out there, he reads him looking that way, then he reads him stepping that way, and then he jumps the throw. Wade Phillips, you know, they say he's a quiet guy. You know, players' coach doesn't have a lot of emotion. He's shown quite a bit of emotion tonight. I think this yeah. is a moment in time, and this is one of them for, for this team. I know it's early and all of that, but it's a, it's a, a bit of a cliche. As we've made a statement or a statement game and all of that, but in effect, yeah, got off to a nice start against the Giants. Looked very good last week against Miami. Now you come in here, you go home three and zero. Oh, you got St. Louis next week. They're reeling. Then you go to Buffalo. And then they've got a game. I tell you, they've got a game against New England on Sunday, October 14th in Dallas. Right. You always want to measure yourself, you know. And and you know the Cowboys, I think, came in here and said, if we want to be the best, we have to beat the best. And in the NFC last year, the Chicago Bear team was the best. Those two are two happy guys, aren't they? Very. The same picture we saw at the end of the Giant game a couple of weeks ago. Right, and I don't know what the answer is. You know, you say, well, you have to rush Romo, you have to take away the middle. He just gets away from it. And then you have to cover Terrell Owens. Well, the way Jason Garrett is moving him around now, you have to find him before you cover him. I mean, he's been in the slot, he's been wide receiver right and left, he's been in the backfield. They line him up all over the place. Belichick's already trying to figure it out. Two minute warning. Third down and 10 at the 47 yard line. And now they go to their third back, Tyson Thompson, an Irving, Texas native. And they'll punt Dallas since 99. We'll go to 3 0. And they made the playoffs in each of those seasons. And for Wade Phillips. You know, it's funny he, he gets the job. I mean Wade is in his late 50s and some people said ah oh, it's just you know it's, it's a, he's a retread and he coached Denver and he was at Buffalo and interim and all that stuff and Jerry Jones said no no you know what this is the guy. This is the right guy for the team right now. Yeah don't you think that some things just fit. Yep. And Wade Phillips is a fit right now for the Dallas Cowboys. And who knew he was such an offensive genius 116 points in three games they brought him in for the defense. Well, I'll tell you I'm really <laughs> impressed with Jason Garrett. I mean I've known Jason for a long time when he you know played for the Cowboys and you know coached around and lived in New York for a while and and you know he put in this offense and you know he was a player and the players really respect what he does and what he knows and. It's not going to be long before this guy is the head of something in this league. Uh, he, he was almost the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. As that kick is out of bounds. Remember, Jerry Jones hired Garrett before he hired Phillips. And in fact, he brought Garrett in, and there was some mystery as to whether Garrett was going to be the offensive coordinator 
with the assistant head coach or the head coach at that particular point. Yeah, well, to come from Miami, he had to be one of those things. I mean, Jerry Jones had to tell Miami that he will either be the offensive coordinator or he'll be the head coach. They wouldn't have let him, uh, you know, be hired as a quarterback coach or something else. So that was a pretty good inherited guy for Wade Phillips. What do you think of the horse trailer? Well, we've already seen Mr. Romo, so he's already uh, making his way across the country every week. I think. Uh, I think his receiver. The the player. I do too. I mean, uh, Terrell Owens uh, played great tonight, and he's been he's been that way all this season. I mean, watching on film, he works as hard as I've ever seen him work in a game, and and he's he's always there and he's getting open, making the tough catches. The run after the catch. He's a complete deal right now. Well, think of it this way. Back to back on the horse trailer will go Randy Moss and Terrell Owens. Who would have thought? <laughs> yes, who would have thought? <laughs> I tell you, both of those guys had to pile <laughs> up, opened on them over the years. Oh, man. But I remember, you know, I did a game against the Chicago Bears, San Francisco 49ers against the Chicago Bears, when Terrell Owens caught 20 passes, a league record. Jerry Rice's last game at home for the 49ers. Broke a long standing league record, too, held by Tom Fears for, as I recall, about 50 years. Horse Trader player of the game, Chris Collinsworth, will be along. We'll do a little give and take with CC. Andrea is going to talk to Tony and to T.O., all part of our post game show coming up. Tony Romo, some Cowboy fans here in Chicago, they had a good night. So did Tony, 329 yards. T.O. goes up on the horse trailer. A couple of minutes ago, Andrea down on the field with Tony and with Terrell. Such a teammate you are. You're telling him about his hat position. That's really the way to work together. But He's getting a straighter. He's getting a straighter. There he goes. We're trying to teach him. Tony Romo, fashion played here. <laughs> so much talk coming into this game about how you hadn't faced a top defense this season, even though you led the NFL in scoring. What kind of statement do you make tonight? Well, I don't think we're really into statement games. We, we understand it was a big game here tonight, and this is a great football team. And to come in here into their... You know this environment and play this well. I think we're pretty excited. What do you do with all the weapons? I mean, really, especially the way that this guy 81 has come along. I'm just lucky to be in a good situation. You know, we just, you know, he's unbelievable, and we got a lot of good players. And you know, I just go out there and try and get him the ball and get out of the way. All right, thanks, Tony. What, what do you think is the difference for you this season? Well, I'm gonna take a different approach from Tony. I, I, I'll say, you know, team did a great job defensively. You know, uh, they gave us some opportunities and. Uh, you know, we we came here, mission accomplished, and I feel like we had a statement made. Well, what was the statement? Well, I feel like you know, uh, you know, they, they they had so much um, riding on their defense. Everybody talked about how good they were, and they are good. And uh, we we killed ourselves in the first half, and we just had to just kind of eliminate uh, the penalties and mistakes, and uh, come out in the second half and and get some drives going. How were you able to do that in the second half? Man, just uh, staying focused, and I, and I think uh, you know we were kind of just out of sync a little bit, and uh, you know once we get a, a first half going, you know like we do the second half, I think we'll be okay. All right, Terrell, thanks very much. Right. Okay, Andrea, 34.